Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. Uh, before we start getting in the presentation, I, I want to level set for everyone. Uh, some of it is my background, but wanted to make sure you get the most out of this uh, webinar. This is really about education and some of it are my viewpoints. Uh, just a little background. I've been, I've been doing uh, quality assurance for over 25 years uh, in the industry. Uh, so I've developed products. I, I was one of the early people in the, I'm going to date myself, back in the mid-90s when we looked at the behind-the-scenes needs of testing, integration testing. Uh, and that's become web services, that's become uh, uh, links with data, that's become the integration of web methods, TIPCO, all the different MQ, all the different uh, pieces. And what's really important there is you see all that integration of technology going on, plus the add-in platforms like AWS, uh, Azure, and you the pressure of the, the businesses getting things out the door, it really changes the focus and need around what needs to be done. Uh, I, I really want to stress that I'm going to do a little bit of ed education early on about waterfall versus agile, but then jump into how things have changed and how agile has affected it. And frankly, I want the net net of that is how does it affect you as a person, right? From your career pathing to what are the skills you need to do? And I'm going to give you an answer that you're going to hear probably through this uh, webinar is there really aren't QA managers anymore. Uh, you can certainly see them out there in different industries, but really that is management goes along with the skills and the delivery of continuous agile uses and such. So uh, when you hear a word like QA manager, understand that's a declining trend. And uh, I certainly talk offline about that. I don't want to insult anybody, but really when you hear that, you hear about managing of people and there's more than that. And I want to make sure that we understand that the industry has changed from that kind of management structure to more of a best practice of delivery and throughput to making sure we meet the uh, needs of the uh, end users or business. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I want to start by uh, with this slide and understanding uh, just by definition, uh, we certainly, uh, maybe most of you on the call know the waterfall methodology and the reason is it looks like a waterfall. There's steps, right? Requirements to design, to development, to testing, to deployment and maintenance. And these are very, very long cycles. Uh, people can say they can do waterfall in, a, in two month segments or three months, but that is really um, a tough stretch and they can be anywhere from six to nine months. And the bottom line is there's so much innovation going on, so much integration and so much pressure from the business uh, I dare say that waterfall is really tough to do in in most in, uh, industries, and there are exceptions. We'll talk about those, but really, waterfall is about those steps to the deployments. In this case, steps one through six. And just kind of as a background, right? Uh, you you were taught that developers completed the code, did the coding, testers test, and I'll, I'll frankly, sometimes it was developers that weren't great coders ended up being testers because that's the way it was. Well, operations built the services, support the release. They all complained about each other, no one worked together, and software releases could take months. That's the way it was. And some environments were better, some were worse, but it definitely wasn't collaborative. With Agile methodology, uh, I'm, I'm basically showing you a standard type of approach. And once again, this is education, uh, but you'll see a much more different approach. It's, it starts with user stories and the assemblance of a collaborative team. So let's talk about the team makeup that it's changed. It used to be a developer, a tester, and it was like when the developer was done, the tester was start testing, but it's much more team-based and collaborative. So in a typical uh, 
agile team, you are going to have an architect, you're going to have developers, you're going to have QA engineers. Notice I said the word QA engineers, not testers. You're going to have product owners. You're going to have analysts that also do QA engineer work. So you just, the, what you're seeing is, and you're going to have developers doing QA testing and, and QA engineers doing some level of dev development or configuration. What the message I'm trying to make here is that you have a team that is not only collaborative, but I'm going to use the word fungible or multi-skilled. Lots of different skills, so it's not a specific role in its teamwork. So when the user stories come in, they used to be called requirements, you're all working together. You're prioritizing. You're doing your sprint planning. You're you have do daily, build, test, deploy. We'll talk about automation in a minute, but then you're having your daily uh, stand-up meetings. That's called a daily scrum. You're really, you're doing a product implement. And when you're done, there's always some kind of demo and then a retrospective. I think the key thing here is it's small increments of work. It's usually two weeks or less, and you're, you're, you're producing what I call production-ready uh, solutions. It doesn't mean they get released into production, but production ready. Just kind of back up the changes that are going on in the environment and how Agile is affecting it. Think about the measurement, and this is an example. This is a DevOps report. This isn't my information, but kind of shows where world, the world is going and changing and the requirements. And I, I picked a couple different pieces here, but high IT performers, multiple deployments a day. The low performers are once per week or once per month. Lead time for changes can be less than an hour for high performers to uh, one week and one or one month for low performers. When there's a failure, that's called the mean time to recover. It should be less than an hour. Medium performers less than a day, and, and sometimes low performers one to week. And you really get into change failure rate. You know where that gets into like defects, you know, hot fixes, those kinds of things. And the high performers are zero to fifteen percent. And medium is zero, 15%. Look at low performers. Like it's, we introduce a defect, not only in less releases, but also much more often. So the point here is everybody is viewing, think of these as key uh, performance measurements. You got to deliver quick. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over a thousand hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.